despite the wind gusts and the above ocean effects that you first think of, there are some ocean effects that these storms can have. Yeah, absolutely. These storms leave a mark in the wake of their systems, quite literally. Mm -hmm. It's called a cold wake, and it's often in the sea surface temperatures that you can see this footprint in the ocean after the storms go by. So take a look at the water temperatures where we were last week on Tuesday. This was on the 20th. 84 degrees, so plenty warm. But once Cindy started to make its way into the Gulf and started to come on land, check out what happened to the temperatures. Incredible stuff. We see right over the area where Cindy was, those temperatures dropping significantly, so really a literal footprint. Literally, literally. and if you look at you look at often when the storms travel across the Atlantic, they will leave cold water in the wake of their storms because they're churning up all of this cooler water from beneath the ocean. Really, an, an incredible process. This rebounds pretty quickly, though, so we've seen those water temperatures already begin to warm up. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, often the um, uh, the ocean is able to recover quite well, but if you have a really strong storm, it can really dig deep into the ocean and pull up some cooler water, and it takes a while for the ocean to come up from that. But how does this all happen? Right. I think a lot of people are going, okay, so I got it. The, the system, the tropical storm, the hurricane, it's over the water, but why is the temperature dropping? <laughs> exactly. So here's a cross-section of the hurricane. This is what would happen if you were standing on the land looking right at it. You've got these really strong winds that are coming into the center of the storm. And now right in the center, there are no clouds. That's the eye. But it's these really strong winds that are interacting with the wind surface that create turbulence at the top of the layer. And that turbulence mixes up some deeper water from the ocean. And so now this water right near the surface is very warm because it's heated by the sun, you know, but it's a very shallow layer. So as the storm comes by and it's very rigorous, it starts pulling up water from well beneath that layer into the center of the storm. And now Hurricanes need warm water to survive. So if the hurricane stays in one place for a very long time, that's actually not a good situation because they get all that cold water underneath. Right, so you're basically losing your fuel source once you're, you're parked over 68 degree water versus 80 degree water. Yeah, absolutely. And so the deeper the layer, the colder that water can be. All right, so, uh, and then once the storm moves through, we've got that cooler water, that will eventually be either warmed by the sun or, or begin to sink back down? Yes, it will recover. But I wanted to show you one really cool example of a storm, e Eoki, I believe, or EOK. I forget how to pronounce it. This was a typhoon that was in the Central Pacific. Now, it made Category 5 status three different times during its lifetime. And this was its track. It started here in Hawaii and ended up near the coast of Japan. But well beneath the track, as it's made its way, I'm going to draw this in blue. That was the footprint it left in the ocean. Right along the surface and along its track, there was a deep layer of cold water that was left. And so that's not conducive for any hurricane development to form behind it. Described as a super Earth, this planet was discovered in 2009, but scientists now believe there might be water in the atmosphere. And where there's water, there might be life. Astronomers using the Subaru telescope have discovered that a planet called GJ 1214b could very well have life-supporting water in its atmosphere. The super-Earth is about 40 light-years from us. Astronomers made the find after studying the planet's orbit around its star, looking at changes in brightness. And using the Rayleigh scattering process, the same one that makes our sky appear blue, and a filter on the telescope's camera, researchers discovered that the atmosphere likely has water in it. The planet orbits 70 times closer to its sun than we do, so life may struggle to survive there. But we've found life in some pretty extreme places here on our planet, so you never know. I'm Matt Sampson, The Weather Channel.